Hi, my name is Logan Fluke. Uh, I am a student at the Science Technology Institute, uh, currently enrolled in the Graduate Incident Response Certificate Program. Um, I am making a really quick video today on how I prepare for GX certifications. Um, yesterday, I was super um, fortunate to pass the GIAC Network Forensics exam, uh, earning the GNFA certification. Um, and while I have that kind of fresh in my head, I wanted to uh, share my thoughts about how I prepare for GX certifications. Um, I see a lot of people who um, are approaching their first attempt uh, at a GX certification you know, or you know, fifth or sixth attempt at a GX certification and uh, always want to know what uh, other people do to prepare for these certifications as they are uh, quite difficult. Um, so I wanted to kind of share some of my thoughts and, and what I personally do. Uh, what I do is probably not going to work for everyone. Uh, actually, I know it's not going to work for everyone as I've, as I've talked to other people, um, but I, I think it's important that um, people kind of share what they do to prepare for these certifications um, and then um, so that I can learn from them and they can learn from me. Um, so I wanted to, to talk a little bit about that. So if you've never taken a GX certification, um, they are all open book. So you can bring all your books into the exam um, and utilize them, which sounds really nice, except for when all of your books um, are about this thick. So these are my uh, Forensics 572 books um, that coincide with the GNFA certification. And uh, there's just too many, too many pages to try and go through uh, during a test. So what a lot of students like to do um, is create what's called an index. So an index is normal, normally just a list of terms and descriptions uh, for different topics that you have learned throughout the course. And people can use a, a variety of, of setups for their index. So I'll walk you through how I create mine. So what I have right now, this is the uh, course demo for Forensics 572. Uh, it's completely free. You can sign up for course demos for a lot of different science courses. So I don't think there's any issue with me showing it. So the way that I study for these exams is uh, I personally really like the on-demand platform. So all the classes I've taken have used on-demand. Um, and what I will do is I will watch the videos um, through this uh, portal while having my book open on site. So here we have the slide of the blank slate, yada, yada, yada. So I actually have my book um, sitting next to me, which has the actual page numbers and some more detail uh, over the slides at the bottom. Um, and while I'm going through uh, the slides on one monitor, on the other monitor, I will have a uh, OneNote tab open. So something like this, where I will be taking yada, yada notes, um, and then I will have a Excel sheet open. And what that's going to look like is four columns. In those columns, it's going to have uh, a title, description, page, and book. And here, if you know we hit a section that describes Nmap, I would put something like Nmap for the title of the term, and then description, you could put something like network scanning, and put whatever page it was on uh, and then whatever book you uh, it was found on. And then, you know, you can go somewhere and you see Nessus or something uh, and you would have um, text there. You would record the book. And you would keep on uh, moving through all the different terms that the sections covered. Um, for me personally, um, I come across a lot of topics that I might have a decent head knowledge of. So sometimes I don't like to have a bunch of verbiage in my description tag. So say I came across something like IPv4. I know a decent amount about IPv4, so I don't really get a whole lot of just typing a bunch of stuff in the description and making my index longer. So what I'll do for a, a term like that is I'll just put C page uh, and then I'll put the, the page number and the book it coincides. This way, if I go to a question in the exam that um, normally I have a good understanding 
of, but I still kind of brain dump or freak out during that question. Uh, I still have a pointer to the book and the page, but I probably won't need it. So I just have the C page and that can kind of keep my index at a reasonable level. Um, so a lot of the indexes that I have have a, a pretty good percentage of C pages and the rest have actual uh, information. So while I go through the course material, I will continue to build out uh, my index. And a lot of the indexes that I have are four or five or 600 uh, terms long. So I, I created a really quick kind of mock data index on this other tab, where it's just a bunch of junk data, uh, a bunch of different names of, of uh, animals, and then I think their scientific name, probably not, um, and then some page numbers and some books. And this is kind of what my index would look like at the end of a uh, at the end of studying the five books, a bunch of terms, all their descriptions, their pages and their books. So for a lot of students, this is actually where they stop. This is plenty for a lot of people. They'll just grab a file like this and they'll print it out. And they'll take this or something that looks like this into the exam room with them. Um, and so if they come across a term, African Buffalo, obviously you want to get that in a GIAC exam, uh, they would know the description and the page in the book. For me personally, uh, I go uh, another step. Uh, a lot of people go another step, and that's going to the open source tool called uh, Voltaire. I think that's how it's pronounced. I apologize if it's not. And here uh, you can create indexes, import indexes, uh, and export indexes as different file types. So you can actually create an index just within the tool itself. Uh, if you just go put an index name in, hit create new index, and then you can find that uh, down here at this example. Sorry, I've already recorded this like once and then I realized I wasn't screen sharing. Uh, so when you create a new index, it would have something like this. And you could put in these different terms and their descriptions, and you could build your index like this. Uh, I personally, don't recommend having your index in, in this as like if the tool ever goes down, you don't want to lose it. So I always keep mine in an external um, spreadsheet that it is then backed up to a cloud or something like that. So I always have them. Um, but what I really get use out of is importing an index. So the way that I do it, and I really hope someone can like comment or message me on LinkedIn and tell me I'm doing this wrong and they know a better way. But I have to copy all of the terms in my like pre-built Excel sheet and put them in a new Excel sheet every time. That's just not in table formatting. And then if I save this as download as book four, I can go back to Voltaire and I can do import and I'll name this mock data. Upload my book four. So that's right there. And that should go all the way down here to mock data. And now when we go into the edit mode, we see all of the different animals and their scientific names as the index. Now that it's in Voltaire, we can um, export it. And that's where you click Build Index. So when you click that, uh, it comes to this page. We can put in the title. We can select our uh, style. I always go uh, doc for Word doc, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll show you why. And then you uh, select the index that you have. So we just built mock, da uh, mock data, so that, and we'll generate it download index, and that should download as a Word document. And this is what it looks like once it's been exported. So it has the title page, and then all of your terms are listed on uh, individual pages by the first letter of the term. So A all the way to D, or all the way to Z. And then it, you can also have special characters and numbers. Um, so like if you had 802.11, um, as a term, you would have a page that started with uh, eight with numbers. Um, here, you can obviously just print this out and and take it into the 
the exam room. Uh, I go yet another step forward with this where I will actually be super nerdy. And um, so I just took GNFA. So I'll go on Google and I'll type in GNFA uh, certification. And I'll go on images and I'll, I will grab this image, which might be copyrighted, might not. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> And I'll throw that into the Word doc. And I'll actually put the like Sans uh, logo right there and I'll put like my name. Um, and then I will save this. Make sure it's saving to the right spot. Let's put that in. Okay, cool, it is. So now what I do is I have my Word doc. I will go to uh, Staples. So I have a Staples right next to my house um, and they do professional print. A lot of places do a pr uh, professional print. I think like Office Depot does it. Um, some like shipping companies now do it at, like their um, shops. Uh, so if you don't have a place that does professional print, uh, this is, isn't a step you can take, but a lot of places do. So for Staples specifically, I can go to their professional print and I can start a project. And I can upload this mock data to it. What I also like to do while that's up uploading is I'll go to my OneNote and all of the notes that I've taken, I can export as a PDF. So I will print that off and I will throw that in my downloads folder as well as notes, then I will add another file from my computer, notes. And what this is gonna do is it now is gonna have my uh, Word doc followed immediately by my notes. I'll hit continue. Now I can customize it. Uh, so for staples, I always leave it letter and portrait and double-sided because that's gonna cut down on prices a lot. Um, and this is what it is gonna look like. So it's gonna be, you know, mock data all the way to uh, the back page, which is the, the notes, the start of the notes. So I always have a uh, double-sided because that saves on paper. I leave it as the standard paper. I always click black ink because if you notice that it went from 19 bucks to $6. Um, so that's a big, uh, big <laughs> price drop. Here, I, I always pick a uh, coil because I've had a lot of issues with some of the other like bindings, but this, again, that's just me. And then I like to have a clear cover on it and a, and a black cover on the back. And so this is what it would look like. You have your front, which is this clear, you know, ping, and then your nice little picture and all of your uh, data with the back little black cover. And I would send this to Staples for, I guess in this example, it's 11 bucks. And uh, I can normally get it same day. And then I would grab that, bring that. And when I go into my test, I would have my GX books and then I would have my index. So this is my actual GNFA index. So again, I made it kind of pretty with the, with the you know, certification logo and the school name and my name. And it has um, some of my notes in the back and then all of the different terms in alphabetical order. And this way, when I go on the exam and I see a term I don't know, I, I just flip to wherever it is and find it, grab the book, flip to the page, and uh, hopefully I can answer the question now that I've reviewed the content. So that's what I do. Again, it's kind of a lot of moving parts for, for some people. Some people are perfectly fine leaving it as just the, the basic Excel sheet like this. Um, you can do, you know, whatever you want. Um, I, I have done this approach for all of my GX exams so far, and, and it's um, done me really well. Uh, I also like to um, kind of collect the indexes and, and have them all together. It's kind of like a fun, little nod to to the work that you have to put in to get these certifications. So um, yeah, that's that's what I do. Uh, I hope 
this video is a little bit helpful for for someone <laughs> uh, to get something out of uh, and, and shines a little light to some of the thought process that um, students can take for GX certifications uh, in their exams. So thank you so much for uh, for watching and have a good one. Thank you.